Competition is healthy, but some games just can't take the heat. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're looking at the top 10 video game franchises that killed their competitors. For this list, we're looking at games and franchises that were successful or had promise, but were then rendered irrelevant by the success of a rival. We're not necessarily saying that these franchises are dead and gone, but they just couldn't hold up against their competitors. That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> You're right. Number 10, Tekken killed Virtua Fighter. Primitive and blocky as it appears now, Sega's Virtua Fighter was revolutionary for being the first fighting game to feature 3D graphics. But the year after it was released, fellow Japanese publisher Namco released their answer to it with Tekken. <laughs> Directed by Virtua Fighter designer Sichi Ichi and featuring an innovative control scheme, the first Tekken was designed as a competitor to Sega's Virtua Fighter 2, thus kicking off a rivalry between the two series. This continued through the next decade, with each franchise trying to one-up the other in terms of graphics and characters. But since the release of the fifth game in 2007, it seems like Virtua Fighter has fallen by the wayside, while Tekken continues to thrive with several main games and spin-offs still in the pipeline. <laughs> You win. Number 9. Half-Life Killed Sin Vader is extremely improbable. In the fall of 1998, a first-person shooter was released for the PC which featured an in-depth sci-fi story, detailed graphics, and was set to revolutionize the FPS genre. That game was Sin, and then Valve released Half-Life just a couple weeks later and made Sin immediately irrelevant. Yeah, Sin's greatest, um, uh, Sin might have just been the curse of bad timing, but it also didn't help that Half-Life became one of the most important FPSs of all time, with its pioneering of scripted sequences and realistic graphics. Sin managed to spawn an expansion back in 1999 and an episodic sequel in 2006, but at that point, Half-Life had completely changed the FPS landscape with its 2004 sequel and subsequent episodic installments. <laughs> Number 8. Candy Crush Saga Killed Bejeweled Delicious. You'd be hard pressed to find anyone who hasn't wasted an embarrassing amount of time playing Bejeweled on their computers or phone. PopCap's browser-based puzzler was an instant success and was followed by a multitude of sequels and spin-offs. And of course, eventually it found its way to mobile phones when the technology allowed it. Excellent. But a challenger to the Match 3 throne first appeared in 2012 in the form of Candy Crush Saga. Not only did it feature over 2,000 unique levels, but it also was based around a pay-to-play model, which addicted players basically ate right up. Candy Crush soon held all the power in the mobile game market, spawning companion games like Soda and Jelly Saga, while Bejeweled remains a fun yet increasingly irrelevant distraction. <laughs> Number 7. Grand Theft Auto Killed Driver ah! Man, sorry about that. Oh my God! In 1999, GT Interactive released Driver for the PS1, which was like a 3D version of the early GTA games, in which you could drive cars and do anything in a fully rendered environment. Driver and its sequel became big successes, only until GTA made the jump to the third dimension in 2001. <laughs> you can't that that! In short, Grand Theft Auto 3 revolutionized not only its genre, but the entire gaming industry with its sandbox gameplay. Driver just couldn't keep up with Rockstar's blockbuster franchise, with its next two installments flopping critically and commercially. The Wheelman was last seen in 2011's moderately successful Driver San Francisco, but he can never hope to attain the accolades that GTA still receives. Number 6. Resident Evil Killed Alone in the Dark <laughs> As the first 3D survival horror game, Alone in the Dark was incredibly influential. The mysteries and scares provided by it and its sequels frightened gamers for years. But in 1996, 
Capcom released their answer to Alone in the Dark with the horror classic Resident Evil. What a mansion! Captain Wesker, where's Chris? The two games were surprisingly similar, both sporting so-called tank controls and both being set in a mansion. But as the breakout title on the still young PlayStation, Resident Evil became a blockbuster success, soon dwarfing its rival in popularity and levels of innovation. It's a monster! Let me take care of this. Resident Evil continued to frighten and innovate in tons of installments in the next 20 years, while Alone in the Dark took a break and then came back in 2008 with a reboot and it, uh, yeah, it didn't go well. Who the hell am I? Number 5. Skylanders Killed Disney Infinity This is Skylands, an ancient world of wonder and mystery. After it was clear that the Spyro franchise wasn't going to survive as a regular platformer, Activision decided to take it in a completely different direction. Namely, it became part video game, part collectible toy line. Against all odds, Skylanders became an instant success, becoming the top-selling game of 2012. Disney then decided that they wanted a piece of the Toy to Life action, and set out to do it with their already established and huge stable of characters they have from themselves, Marvel, and Star Wars. Unfortunately, Skylanders had already captured too much of the market, and despite its updates and new character additions, Infinity was never really able to catch on. The series was discontinued in May 2016, and Disney laid off most of the development staff soon after. And in case you foolish human fools haven't figured it out yet, I'm the bad guy. <laughs> Number 4. Overwatch Killed Battleborn Talk about a quick and brutal death. Battleborn came from the FPS maestros at Gearbox Software, a unique attempt at being an arena-style shooter and a MOBA hybrid. It received okay reviews and was a decent commercial success. But what really sunk it, though? It was released a mere three weeks before Blizzard's Overwatch, which basically did everything that Battleborn did, but added more memorable characters and a gameplay style that's easy to learn but hard to master. Overwatch received massive critical acclaim and commercial success, rendering Battleborn pretty much DOA, with the player count dropping below 1,000 by July 2016. Yes, Number 3. Call of Duty Killed Medal of Honor Be advised, hostile counter UAV is online. Hostile UAV spotted. By 2002, EA's Medal of Honor series had arguably reached its peak with the PC-exclusive Allied Assault and several successful console games. However, a few developers from Allied Assault left to found Infinity Ward and released the World War II shooter Call of Duty in 2003. Ironically, Call of Duty was codenamed Medal of Honor Killer during its development. But Infinity Ward wouldn't fulfill the promise of the codename until 2007, when the Game Changer Modern Warfare was released. EA kinda realized they had to jump on the modern times if they had a chance of staying alive, but an Afghanistan set reboot in 2010 and its sequel in 2012 proved that there was just no place for Medal of Honor in a post-Call of Duty world. Number 2. Madden Killed All the Other Football Games <laughs> Franchise rivalry is one of the most important parts of sports, right? Well, nobody told that to EA. While their Madden football franchise remained one of the top-selling franchises, period, it still coexisted alongside other NFL-based series like Blitz and NFL 2K. That was until 2004. Chambers didn't haul that one in, and it falls incomplete. After Sega's ESPN NFL 2K5 was hailed as one of the best sports games of all time, EA faced a true threat to its dynasty. The publisher then pulled the rug out from its competitors and signed an exclusivity deal with the NFL that made it the only true football game on the block. NFL 2K was promptly discontinued, while Midway's over-the-top NFL Blitz series released two installments without the license before going downloadable in 2012. Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Swing and a miss on the fastball that time, out number two. So 
Started. And there's a reason that's good on the assist by Harden. Number one, World of Warcraft killed every other MMO. Yes, yes, yes. We know that this is basically an exaggeration. There are still a ton of MMOs still running with decent sized subscriber bases like Star Wars The Old Republic and Final Fantasy XIV. But be honest, when you think of a massive multiplayer online RPG, the only thing you really think of is Blizzard's World of Warcraft. Up until its release in 2004, the biggest an MMO ever got was around 500,000 subscribers. At its very peak, World of Warcraft represented 58% of the subscription MMORPG market with 12 million subscribers. It received 6 expansion packs and spawned a player culture that still thrives until this day. Other MMOs might still try their best, but they have no chance of dethroning the king of the genre. Do you agree with our list? What other franchises do you think were responsible for killing the others? Shit! That's not gonna hold them long. For more top tens posted every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Guess those sirens are for you, huh? Good thing you found us.